Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's finally September, and that means next month is October, and it's time to get moving with our Halloween projects. I have two great ones for you coming up, and today I'm gonna to show you the first one. We're going to create an amazing soldered spider web. So get your witch hat and your wire, and let's get now, started. Now this is a super fun project that doesn't call for a lot of materials at all. We're basically just going to use wire and solder. I'm going to start out with some 14 gauge copper wire and I have a pair of nylon jaw or wire straightening pliers and you're going to pull out a length of wire and you're going to put it in the jaw of the pliers and pull the pliers down the wire and get any kinks or bends out of the wire. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure and cut a six inch length of this wire. Now, if your wire is tarnished, you can run it through a little bit of steel wool or a green scotch pad, and you know, it's gonna accept solder better if it's shiny. So I'm gonna measure my six inch length. I'm gonna cut it off with some wire cutting pliers, and then I'm going to do the same with three more pieces. So we need four pieces of six inch lengths of heavy gauge wire. And again, I'm using 14 gauge copper wire. Now you can use silver wire, like a plated wire, that's fine. Um, another thing I'm gonna show you is, you know, once I get these pieces off the spool and I straighten them out, you don't have to measure each piece. I just measure and cut the first one. And then for every, next piece of wire, I'm just gonna hold it up against that first piece I cut and you know, use that to measure it. And it makes it easy. You don't have to you know, mess with a marker and a ruler and marking length and, and cutting you know, to perfection. And they can be a little bit off. They just need to be all you know, pretty close to the same size. So I'm gonna hold my first cut piece up against my wire that's on the spool and then I'm gonna cut that off. And I'm gonna repeat this until I have four six inch lengths of wire. Now once you have all of your six inch lengths of wire cut, I'm gonna take one of the lengths, hold it up against the ruler so I can find the middle point, which would be a three inch mark, and I'm going to cut that in half. And I'm gonna do that with two of my wires. Now you can leave, as I am, two of them long, and I'm gonna create a big X out of that, and that's how we're gonna form the base of our spider web. Um, or you can actually cut all of the wires in half and start with all little pieces. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So to get started, I have my two long six inch lengths of wire and I'm going to crisscross them over to make an X. And this is going to be the shape of the base of our spider web. And the smaller pieces will then be soldered on the left and right sides as you can see. And we're going to form like a large star or asterisk shape. Now we're going to be soldering these wires before we actually form our base and you know start soldering it together. But I'm doing this so I can show you what it looks like. So that's what we're gonna be going for. But before we solder all those pieces together, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some liquid flux ready. I'm going to plug in my soldering iron, get it nice and hot. I've got some lead-free solder and I'm going to tin each piece and what that means is that's coating each piece with a coating of flux and then a coating of silver solder. Now you need to use flux, solder will not stick to raw metal. So if you need some information about soldering, check out my other videos. If you wanna get started learning how to make jewelry with a soldering iron, my latest book is called Soldering Iron Jewelry and I'll put a link to that above and below and I'm going to assemble everything on my work surface and I have an old pair of pliers that I only use for soldering and I also have an old pair of wire cutting pliers that I only use when I'm soldering as well. And the reason for that is because the liquid flux is corrosive and once you get that on your tools, you won't be able to use them for other kinds of jewelry making. So you wanna keep those soldering tools separate from your regular jewelry making tools. So now I'm going to just take each piece and I'm going to coat them with solder. Now, as far as safety goes, I'm soldering on my soldering board. I also have a silicone soldering mat that I keep in my regular workshop. 
So if you have, you know, anything that's fireproof, that's what you're going to want to use. You're going to want to wear safety glasses. It's good to have a fume extractor to absorb, to pull the, you know, the soldering fumes out of the air. Um, wear a mask and, you know, also an air purifier. If you don't have a uh, fume extractor, you can put that right on your table where you're working and that works well too. So I am picking up a little drop of solder and I'm just going to let it get onto my wire and once the wire starts to get warm from the soldering iron the solder is going to just melt all over the wire. I'm going to have to hold it with my pliers because the wire gets very hot very quickly. I'm going to turn it over. You can see that I'm constantly applying more flux with that brush and that's just because it evaporates while I'm working and I'm going to continue and tin each piece and you want to make sure that you cover up all the copper. You want to make sure they are completely well coated. Once you're finished tinning all your pieces, you want to check them all out. Make sure that you get the ends of the pieces and that, you know, there's no copper showing through, as I said. And then we're ready to assemble. Now, to begin assembling the base, I'm going to take my two long wires and hold them down with my soldering pliers and apply a drop of solder to attach them. So we have that large X to get started with. And then what we're going to do is attach the smaller pieces. Now, starting with one piece at a time, I'm going to apply flux to the end of the piece and to the, you know, part of the big X part where they're going to attach. So like that joint area, you always want to make sure you have flux on there before you solder it. And I'm just going to work around and attach each piece with a drop of solder. Once all of your pieces are attached, you're going to want to make sure that you flip it over and that you inspect the other side. Sometimes it looks like it's soldered together on the top, but when you flip it over, you realize, oh, like that solder really didn't get to the other side of the wire. And, you know, put a little bit of extra solder in the center and build it up a little bit so they're all attached really well. If you see any rough spots along the wire, just quickly run your hot soldering iron over them, but don't hold it on there too long because, you know, you don't want to melt them apart. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some finer gauge wire. I'm using 18 gauge wire and again I'm going to run the wire through my wire straightening pliers or sometimes called nylon jaw pliers and then to just get some of the tarnish off of it. I have a green scotch pad. You can also use steel wool and I'm going to just run that over the wire once or twice and I'm not really measuring a long length or anything, you know, like a particular length. I just took about maybe eight inches and I snipped that off. Now using one end of the wire, I'm going to put a little bend in it with my finger and I'm going to position it near the center of our spider web. You're going to want to have your soldering pliers and your soldering wire cutting pliers handy. Again, we're going to be using flux and solder and we're going to be using more of that wire while we're working. But like I said, I'm only going to use like maybe an eight inch piece or so at a time. So I bent one end of it, as you can see with my thumb, I just made a little bend in it and positioning that wire near the center of our spider web. I'm going to apply some flux and I'm going to hold it against the base and I'm going to just put a little bit of solder on there to attach it and make sure it's like really attached. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be attaching one side, as you saw, and then we're going to be putting a little bend in the wire. Now, because we're in the center of the spider web and it's just like a little area there where we're going to have like a small U shape, I'm using my soldering pliers to help hold the wire so I can create that bend in there. And then I'm going to pull it up against the next piece of wire, as you can see, and then snip it off. Now you want to be careful that you're snipping the smaller wire. You do not want to accidentally, you know, snip off your base. So I'm going to apply more flux and I'm going to put a small drop of solder on there. And that is our first little U shape. And what we're going to be doing is we're creating a pattern and we're going to then take our next end of wire. We're going to put a little bend in it again and we are going to attach that to the last spot that we soldered. And here I'm going to show you exactly, you know, what I'm doing as I'm, as I'm telling you. I bent it and it's nothing, you know, it doesn't have to be a particular length or, or, you know, anything with the bend in particular. Just put a little bend in it. I put some flux on that wire. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of solder on it and I'm going to hold it in position. 
right up against where I ended the last wire and I'm going to put a little bit of solder on there and you know it's a little piece of wire and you don't want to hold your soldering iron on there very long because you don't want to melt off the previous piece that you just put on. So when we're soldering something that has like a lot of little pieces of wire on it, you want to kind of have a quick hand. Now I have my soldering iron turned up about halfway. It's not like turned like all the way up, but it's not um, really low either. You know, it has to be hot enough to melt the solder, but I don't want it super hot so my pieces of wire just go, you know, rolling off and falling apart everywhere. And once I have that piece shaped and measured up against the next wire, again, I cut it off. And I'm going to position it, make sure it's like touching that next base wire, put some flux on it, a little bit of solder on it, and then that's our next little U shape. So we're gonna continue to do that and go around and again, make that pattern. Now here's a little bit of a closer view for you so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Again, we're meeting up that new piece of wire right up to the spot where the last one ended. And once we get around, like all the way around with our little U's, right, we're not going to close it off. It is kind of like a spiral. So once we get to that point, you'll see what we do. We're not going to close it off. We're going to kind of pull the wire up and we're going to travel outwards toward the outer ends of our base. So now I've worked my way around and you can see that we have, you know, one last little U piece to put in there. And I kind of made a little bit of a mistake. I should have started traveling up the wires as I was going around with that first, you know, little set of U's. So I'm attaching my wire, not to the last spot where I stopped, but to the opposite side. And this is going to help me just move it up a little bit higher. And I don't know if that really makes sense. Maybe you might have to play that once or twice to see what I did there. But um, I am now kind of traveling up with the wire and we're going to go around and we're going to create the next, I guess you call it layer maybe, of U's all the way around.
Here you can see I fast forwarded a little bit. It would be tediously boring if you had to watch me assemble every single little piece of this together. You do have to have some patience for this project, but you know, the payoff is pretty great. It's a really cool project. It's perfect for the season. And you know, so many people love Halloween. Did you know that it's like, I think it is the second most collectible holiday after Christmas that people collect, you know, memorabilia and decorate for and all that. So you can see why. And I'm working my way out and I'm just about getting towards the ends of those wires. Now, as we go around and we continue this, where our U shapes are getting larger, they're getting easier to put on. And you know, it's, it gets a like kind of simpler as you work. But what I want to point out is the ends of that base wire, like the X and the pieces that we, you know, added on, you want to make sure that you leave those ends of that wire without the U shapes on it. You want to have those base pieces of wire bare. Okay. So our U's aren't going to go all the way out into the perimeter of our base, if that makes any sense. So you want to leave about one inch of wire uh, around the base that doesn't have, you know, the U soldered on it. So we're going to get to a point where we are going to have to end our pattern. And since this is a spiral, it doesn't close like a circle. And since we're not going to continue it around the perimeter, we're going to have to finish it off a special way. But before we get to that, if you saw just a moment ago, at all the points where the smaller wire was soldered to the larger wire, I took a very small drop of solder and I put like a little drop of solder on there just to make it look finished. It doesn't have to be like perfect little balls of solder. Um, just make a nice rounded drop if you can and that just gives it a nicer look. It gives it a, a more, you know, polished kind of look. So at this point right now, I'm at the end of my spiral. I am finished creating my big spiral. So what we're gonna do is we are going to create a spider to hang from our spider web. Because where we stop that last end, you can see it's kind of awkward. Like it, it, it's, you know, out of pattern. You have that one end where it's, you need something there. So you can either put a spider there, or you can put like, I'm gonna put one that's like hanging down. So I cut about, I cut four pieces of like two to three inch wire, more like two and a half inch wire, and I'm bundling them together. And I'm using that same 18 gauge wire that we used to go around the web. And I have a longer piece that I cut that's about maybe eight inches or so. And I'm holding those together like, you know, little kindling wood. And I'm taking the longer piece of wire and I'm wrapping them snugly. And I'm going to wrap around three or four times until they're pretty you know, secure. And I'm going to make sure that the wrap that I did is in the center of them. I'm going to set it down on my work surface. I'm going to apply some flux only to the wraps. And you don't want to, those are going to be the spider's legs. So we don't want to solder all those together or we won't be able to bend them and shape them the way that we want them to go. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of flux there and I'm going to pick up a drop of solder and I'm going to apply it to the area where I did the wrap. So I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna put a little bit more flux on there and I'm gonna put another drop of solder on there. And that's just to like keep it all together. Like we're soldering the longer wire to the shorter wires. And then after it's pretty secure, I'm gonna inspect it, make sure none of those little pieces are gonna slide out. I'm gonna use my soldering pliers and my fingers and I'm going to separate the wires and you want to be gentle you don't want to break any off but you know just pull them apart a little bit bend them away from each other and once you do one side turn it around and do the other side and you can just use your fingers for this unless the wires are like you know really close together then you might want to use your pliers but usually you can just use your fingers and separate those wires and then what we want to do is we want to you know give it some dimension and for that I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to grab each leg and I'm going to kind of put a little knee in there I'm just going to kind of bend it over and I'm going to go around to the next one and the next one and it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be in the same spot on each leg on each wire um, you know try to keep it you know 
pretty similar to the last one. You don't want like one way up high and one way low. Like keep your bends pretty much in the same area, but you're gonna go around, do one side, then do the other, and there's your spider. You know, you can make the legs a little shorter if you like. If you have one of the wires that's a little too long, you know, you can go and trim them. And, you know, if there's any really pointy edges, you can, you know, file those down if you like. Um, we're gonna solder that as well. So, you know, adjust them, play with them a little bit and, you know, put them just how you like. And then we're going to take our flux again and we're gonna coat the entire thing with flux and with solder. And we wanna do that before we attach it to our spider web because, you know, like I said, that heat travels up that wire, it gets really hot. Um, you know, you wanna make sure you have all that tinning done before you attach it to your main piece. So I'm just picking up solder and I'm just going over all the legs inside, outside, and up the wire. And, you know, watch your fingers, you know, if it's, if it's hot, you wanna use your pliers to hold the wire with and, you know, just coat the entire thing. If your spider looks a little too skinny, just take more solder and build up the body. If you can see the wrapped wires, you know, a little bit too much on your spider, just pick up some solder and build up the body. Make him, you know, nice and round or however you would like him to be. You can even add extra drops of solder and give him like a head or give him eyes. Um, I just made mine with like a, a little body and now we're ready to assemble it. So before I do that, I need to put some kind of a hook on the top of our web that we can hang it from. So I have an extra little piece of wire that was about an inch, inch and a half. I just bent it in half with my pliers to make my own little like jump ring, my own little loop. And I coated it with flux and I coated it with solder. And you can see that I'm just going to use my soldering pliers to hold it against the top prong of our web. And you wanna make sure that the web is in the correct position. If you're gonna be doing the spider like I am and hanging him from where we stopped, you wanna make sure that stopped area is at the bottom and that you put the hook at the top. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on the reverse side of where I put that loop to make sure that it's very securely attached. And then we are going to put some finishing touches on. I'm gonna go around and if needed, I'll add a little bit more flux and little drops of solder on the ends of the wire. And again, that is purely decoration. It gives it a finished, polished look. It makes it look more professional and it just makes it look more cool. And also if you want, you can also go around and put little drops of solder here and there on the web, like on the smaller wires that we attached. And it can kind of look like dew you know, like dew drops, and that's pretty cool too. So now I'm gonna just attach my spider. Now, I did cut down the wire a little bit. It was a little bit too long, you know, the piece I'm attaching there, and I wanna make sure that I'm attaching it right at the spot where we stopped our pattern. And I'm just gonna, you know, flip it over. Again, check both sides. You wanna make sure you have a good connection, add a little bit of extra solder. Then we're going to thoroughly wash our project, dry it, and we're going to apply patina. So using an old plate that I only use for applying patina, I'm going to take a little bit of that patina liquid and I'm gonna put it directly on the plate. I have an old paintbrush that I only use when I'm applying this black patina. And I am going to take the brush, dip it into the patina and brush it right on there. Now you can wear gloves if you like when you're doing this. You should always wear safety glasses for sure and have some paper towels on hand. Once you touch that patina to the metal, it's gonna instantly turn the solder black. So you wanna make sure that all your wires are coated with solder. And you're just going to rub that on with the brush. You want to get a nice black coating on there. So you wanna make sure that you get in between the wires. Um, you know, turn it all different directions when you're working and look for shiny spots. That's what I always do. When I see a shiny spot, then I know that I missed a spot. So it takes a moment or two for the patina to turn the wire black. Uh, you don't wanna ever dip your brush into your bottle of patina. You will contaminate your entire bottle and then it, will, it won't ever then be like a good black patina. It'll turn out like a yucky rusty color or, it, or gray or it just won't get right. So you wanna always make sure that you pour the patina out into a small container or into, you know, right onto a plate and use a disposable paper plate or like I said, an old china plate that you don't use for food. You don't wanna ever mix, you know, your chemicals and, and your eating and this and that. So I keep special dishes that I only use for when I'm working with, 
you know, chemicals and, uh, you know, patinas and that kind of thing. So once I do one side, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to apply patina to the other side. Once again, checking every little nook and cranny, making sure that I covered all of the silver so that we can get a nice black finish. And once I'm completely finished applying the patina, I have some paper towels set up and I'm going to use as you can see there, I have like a napkin I'm holding it with because I don't have gloves on for this. And I'm going to make sure I get the spider really good. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to place it on some paper towels and I'm going to let it air dry. It's going to need to be completely air dried. You don't want to put it in water. Water stops the action of the patina immediately. will It'll stop working. So you want to coat it up real good and then you're going to put it on some paper towels and let it completely air dry. And that usually takes between, I don't know, five and 10 minutes. If you have some areas on your project that have like really you know like where the patina is kind of like in like a recessed area where it's just like really wet you can blot that gently with a paper towel and the plate that I'm working on once I'm done with that and, my, and with my brush I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to squeeze the chemical out of my brush and then put it in a utility sink to wash and I'll take old paper towels and I will use those to sop up whatever chemical is on there as opposed to rinsing it down the drain. You want to sop it up with paper towels and then throw it in the trash. So here you can see it's drying and then in the next photo after it's completely dried I rinsed it off and I dried it off and now I'm going to polish it up and I'm going to be using which is basically it's like a car wax. It's stained glass finishing compound. It's carnu carnuba wax and I'm first going to blot it off and you can see that because I didn't scrub it underwater, some of the patina is gonna come off and that's just how it is. And then I have the wax on an old piece of cloth, like an old cotton t-shirt, works great. I'm gonna rub it into the cloth a little bit and then I'm gonna very gently go over and just coat all of the wire with some of this polish. And it's just like using car wax. You know, you're gonna buff a little bit on and then you're gonna rub it off. And I will do both sides. You're gonna make sure that you're gentle. You don't wanna knock off any of your, your little delicate designs, especially your spider and if your little balls of solder. Now, if some of your balls of solder come off when you're doing this, they probably weren't attached right to begin with. So you wanna make sure that you learn how to attach them very well, that they are like not just sitting on the wire you're soldering them onto, but they are actually melted into that wire, like right into the solder that's on that wire. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the finish that this gets. I'm going to use the soft, clean part of the cloth then to buff the polish off, and it gets a really nice, glossy finish. Now here I flipped it over, and you can see the dull black before you put the polish on. Like That's what it looks like. So it really makes it pop. It really brings out the finish. Now... If you take this cloth and I'm, if I scrub it like really hard, I'm gonna get more of a gunmetal finish. It's gonna take some of the black off and it's just gonna get, you know, it's gonna change the finish. I want a really rich black finish for this. So I'm just gonna do it as, as I'm showing you here. So you wanna do both sides, make sure you wipe all the polish off and that's your project. Make sure you get your little spider there real good and you can use a piece of fishing line through the loop to hang this, or you can use a ribbon or whatever you like, a piece of string is fine. And that's our spider web. I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope you try making one at home. Maybe you'll make more than one, maybe you'll make lots of them. It's actually really relaxing to do. You do need a chunk of time to do it. I did speed up some of the areas of this video because, you know, like I said, it would be very long to watch. So. You know, if you haven't gotten my new book, you definitely should check it out. It's called Soldering Iron Jewelry, and it's only available right now on Amazon. And it is a complete course along with 20 full projects of soldering iron jewelry. So check that out. And thanks for joining me. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.